Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 6A in mid Michigan and today's our day to walk about the garden and check out what's happening. We've been having some rain a little bit last night and a little bit this morning, but not too bad. So everything in the garden is doing really well. There might be a little bit that's drooping from some of the rain, but other than that, uh, things are happy that we got the rain because we haven't gotten some for some time. So let's take a look at what's going on. Well, you can see our hibiscus over here are much more open than uh, when we come out too late in the evening and they close, but definitely got a little bit of batter from the rain over here. But they look so good with the petunias that are on either side as well because they just have very similar um, coloring, right? They, they really look good together. They complement each other very well. And the Tian Shen Seven Sunflowers, you can't tell from here, but they are actually starting to bloom. I see a few of them right here. So this is an amazing pollinator attractor and they just absolutely love this plant. It has nice, beautiful little clusters of, I believe, seven flowers and they actually just attract all of the little bees and just anything that needs pollen and they smell pretty good too so i'm not seeing any over here on this side but you can see that they are really getting ready to bloom and this is what the buds look like isn't that an interesting bud You can see all of the little blooms around the outside getting ready to open, or buds, I should say. And this pinky winky hydrangea over here has taken on some amazing color. It really is looking gorgeous and it's a nice height, but I feel like it's a little bit wide for its space. So next year, I'm gonna try to prune off some of the branches that are kind of a little bit lower and going outwards and uh, try to keep it growing upwards a little bit more so that I can have a bit more of a tree form even than it is right now and also that will I think provide a little bit more room for this beautiful crimson maple that is underneath of it. This Japanese maple has the most amazing cut leaves and this has been in the garden for a few years now and it really put on a lot of growth this year I think because of how much rain we have gotten. And you can see that this Hakona Chloe grass is really starting to kind of come into the path. So this fall or next spring I will definitely have to get in there and um, dig out some of it from the front so that it doesn't come over the path like that but it's gorgeous. I mean it's just beautiful and we're starting to see that put on some of its seed blooms here and I tried growing some of this from seed one time and I was very unsuccessful and I tried all sorts of things to try to get it to grow but I researched it and they say that it doesn't actually really propagate from seed well at all so I guess that makes sense why I couldn't get them to grow. We're just gonna do some random walk about today. We're not gonna go in any particular order. Just kind of where I'm drawn to. And right now I'm drawn to this particular area over here because I'm loving the contrast between this fireside nine bark and the pink diamond hydrangea, which has all of its color on it at this point. And I think that's just so beautiful together. What a combo. mosquitoes have gotten a little bit better. I'm going to try to take you guys back into the way back today. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. I might get a couple of bites, but they're better enough so that I feel confident that I can get back there and get out without too much. So my privet hedge over here is looking really, really overgrown and I got to get after that. I meant to get out into the garden this week but I was just still a bit tired. And um, so I didn't really do that. Uh, thank you everybody for your comments and feedback though on the um, question and answer video. I appreciate that very much. It sounds like people uh, enjoyed it and are interested in having that. 
maybe more regularly. You can see the beautiful raindrops on this lady's mantle, El Camilla Molus. This one is the gold strike variety. Very pretty. So we'll just head down this path, but you'll see this path is completely disappeared right now by the growth of this grass. Isn't that amazing? And it's pretty expensive grass because it grows so slow when you buy it in the nursery. So I'm excited to have some to be able to either transplant in my garden or share with friends and family. Well, this area of the garden really uh, was looking for that uh, rain. It definitely helped. We have some blooms going on these Hostas Royal Standards back here. And these have the very large white trumpet blooms that smell so fantastic in the fall. Highly recommend those. Just to at least have a few of them in your garden if you have hostas. These oak leaf hydrangeas over here are starting to turn tan. So um, they're a little bit past the point of harvesting if I wanted to dry them and have them keep their color. But they still look beautiful right now. We'll keep them on there at least until they uh, no longer have color on them. I might even keep them for some winter interest. The little hottie hydrangeas are still nice and fresh. So we have those on either side of this garden path here. And we're finally starting to get some height on our golden sword yuccas that we have planted in these containers, which is fantastic because you can see them now above the other plants that are in the planters. And I knew it would take some time to grow those on. And people might wonder about <laughs> why I had them in there because they were so small, but um, they're kind of hard to find in my area. And since I have them, um, I wanted to have something perennial in these pots that could come back year after year. And so hopefully they'll winter over for me along with this little dwarf Alberta spruce, which has been doing really well in the pot. As have our pots down here at the end of the pool with the caladiums. I wasn't sure how the caladiums were going to do in all of the sunshine that we get here. But they're doing great and indeed the verbena that is going with them also looks wonderful. So here we have the verbena in front. And then I will tell you that these two large pots, the sun patients are looking amazing along with the grape calabracoa to the point where they have literally smothered the geraniums that were in there. But that's okay because I actually feel like the color of the purple has taken over even more and so we've got this really nice deep um, deep color very rich all right so let's take a look at this japanese fern over here because i'm loving it it's putting on lots of new growth with this little bit of rain that we just got and I just adore the growth pattern on this. I like the fact that the leaves are shiny and I love that it goes in like a spiral. It's just so architectural. Now I am going to be coming through and cutting down these flax over here on the left. They've gotten powdery mildew like one of my other flax. So I'm not going to let them stick around not with the powdery mildew on them. The fire light is looking gorgeous over here, still has lots of color on it. And our pieris are looking good back here. I've kind of got some real big shoots on this one. I'm hoping that these buds don't all open, but some of them almost look like they're going to. So we'll see what happens. Ooh, as I get closer to the way back, I can hear the mosquitoes around my ears. So let's see what we can do just to take a quick peek and show you guys because it's been a while. Okay, here we go. We did get a little powdery mildew back here on some of our Brunnera. 
So you can see they have some black on them. It's very unsightly, but they will recover. The lung warts are looking great. You can see some of our other Brunnera still are very, very healthy. And our Epimidium have really done a great job of growing in here so I think they're happy which is nice I have another one that should be around here someplace it's much smaller here it is right here we have all sorts of different types of the lungwort this is the Diane Claire I do see a little bit of deer damage but nothing horrible really now I did get a lot of deer damage so far on my witch hazel tree over here which is a bummer, but I think they just walk right by it and eat the leaves off, so. All right, we're gonna head right back up after we get down here because the skeeters are bad under these uh, trees and in the shade. But look at those ferns, aren't those beautiful? We have those autumn ferns down here. They look great. And uh, the hellebores are still looking very, very healthy. Ooh, okay, let's get out of here and head back up. Okay, this is at least a little bit better. <laughs> wow. So we have a little lime over here, and I don't know if you remember me telling you, but when the contractors came out for the fence, this was the one hydrangea that actually got stepped on and kind of broken. But look at how big this bloom is for a little lime. It's huge. I can't wait to see what this does next year now that it's got some, some good roots. This is its third year in the garden, so that's kind of when plants take off. And I have a feeling it would have been, you know, three times as impressive as it is right now if um, it hadn't have gotten that damage to it. Now this one here is a limelight. This one was just planted last year, so I didn't expect it to be very big this year, but it is very beautiful. And we have some pure joy sedum down at the bottom that's starting to bloom. And this hydrangea here is the, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on it right now. It's the rouge one. And it's, it's kind of uh, beginning to turn into the parchment color but it's really beautiful i do need to pull out some of the stems that are from the daylilies that are inside of it to uh, freshen that up but those are all gone over now so i did get most of those cleaned up there was just one last one with a bloom on it so i didn't cut it off and we have some more pure joy sedum that is blooming down here. So we have this kind of repeated a bit throughout the border. And I think that's nice to have. The butterfly bush is looking great. Look at all the blooms on that. There's been quite a few butterflies recently. Not as many as the mosquitoes, but definitely more. <laughs> And this is a strawberry sundae hydrangea. It just put out a couple of new blooms. So this one still looks really nice and fresh. It was a little bit behind in blooming because I transplanted it this year from over in this corner, but it looks great. And I'm really happy with how it did after transplanting. And I just love the contrast of that with the nine bark. That's beautiful. And just look at the buds on Autumn Joy Sedum. These are huge, huge heads. And here, of course, we have a really lovely view of all the hydrangeas from the smooth hydrangeas that are over there to the paniculata hydrangeas that we have by the fountain. And I will tell you that sedums just do look really, really lovely with hydrangeas, whether it's panicle hydrangeas or smooth hydrangeas. They just are a really nice complement to each other. 
the nine bark over here is getting kind of crazy. That one's the little devil nine bark. It's kind of a medium devil nine bark now, but that is as big as it's supposed to get. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't take over the whole area. This strawberry sundae hydrangea though looks so good. It doesn't have a ton of drooping um, with the rain or anything like that. And then we have our limelight, of course, with the most giant football shaped blooms. Those are incredible. I understand now why um, people rave about their limelights. So I love having that in the garden. And uh, they're not ready for, you know, cutting or anything like that, but they're so big. I may cut the, I may cut some of those. I think I may be having enough time in the season for this hydrangea to rebloom. This is the Let's Dance Can Do. And these were the earlier blooms from last year. And this is supposed to be able to bloom on new growth. So perhaps we'll get some blooms from this because it looks like just the growth pattern before a bloom comes out. So we'll see, we'll keep you posted. And uh, it's interesting to watch this Japanese maple grow because you can see the new growth is much deeper in color. The sun has kind of bleached out some of the other leaves the last few weeks on this, but it's still healthy. It's gonna be just fine. Oh, we'll look at this massive bumblebee right here. He's so big. He's one of the ones with the shiny back. See, we just have so much beauty right now in the end of the summer. And this berry white hydrangea really is a stunner with its color. It's very, very vibrant in terms of the color that it has. It makes really good dried cuttings as well if you like that color. Um, it will retain that as long as you keep it inside. You can see we're starting to get lots of new growth on our arborvitae topiaries here up at the top. So I need to come through and trim those too. Lots of stuff to do, lots of time to get out in the garden soon. So let's go check out the front yard. Well, along this path, we have the fern jungle of those royal ferns. They're looking nice and healthy. And I'm going to come through and cut back the liatris this time of year. I like to do that. Otherwise, we're just going to have seed heads everywhere. The front walk looks really nice right now. I think the... Um, gosh, this... Um, not sedge, it's Carex. It is doing so well in its new home. I did have some deer come in and eat off some of my impatience, so that was too bad. But we're getting some really nice blooms still on our bloomstruck hydrangeas over here. And they didn't come up onto the porch or get the window box, so that was nice. This is really the damage that they did was down here. But look at these gorgeous blooms on this begonia. It's it's just so gorgeous. It looks like it's just dripping with flowers and down below here as well. So pretty. Oh, I love begonias when they look like that. And we have our things potted up. I was hoping to get the lavenders planted this week, but we didn't. So many ideas in so little time. But everything's doing well. Um, this one did get some nipped buds from the deer who came up and ate the impatience as well. So I'll have to watch out because these are nice fresh leaves right here that they might want to eat also. Or I'll just have to watch for that. Over here, our gara is really blooming very, very well right now. The Belize pink. So I wanted to show that to you.
And this garden bed still has lots of lovely colors. And I'm so glad with the way that this juniper and the elderberry turned out together. I think they make a really neat combination. My whole goal was to have it look like the juniper was like coming out of the elderberry. And I think it's finally starting to do that after several years of them being paired together. It's pretty cool. I love it when you get to see something that you had in your head actually work out. That's pretty cool. Lots of beautiful blooms and color out here in this front garden bed right now. I mean, you can't go wrong with that combination here of the sedum and the millennium alliums up in front with the gorgeous blooms. And I will say that these hydrangeas really have lasted quite well because I think they're shielded a little bit from the southern sun by those orange rocket barberries. So it's nice. They have a very light tinge of pink on them. Very, very mild. Over here, our new garden bed has its purple fountain grasses. Both of them have uh, shot out their fountain grasses, if you will. So we're getting some blooms on this one over here as well. So they are going to be looking much more similar, more of a mirror image of each other. And this garden bed is really starting to fill in a little bit. That bloomerang, or not bloomerang, that's the um, re-blooming Wygela right here. And it just keeps going and going and going. It's wonderful. This is the pink variety. And I just love when you start getting those new leaves on the oak leaf hydrangea because look how silver they are. Aren't those gorgeous? And I'm seeing lots of little leaf grows and nodes where new stems and new leaves will be coming out. Whether that happens this year or next year, we'll see. We're checking out our blue corner over here. I think it's looking pretty good. We're starting to get blooms on our lavender. I'm just really enjoying the blue stem grass. I always love blue stem grass. So I'm glad that I found these when I did and that they had three of them because I think they're gonna look really pretty on this corner, especially as we move into fall here and they get a little bit bigger. It's so lovely. I like the uh, way that the spiky foliage um, kind of goes with the holly back here, but we have the contrasting leaf texture because this sky pencil holly, you know, it stands alone, but it should get taller and taller. It's just a slow grower, just like the blue, um, or the white pine over here, the Niagara. Niagara Falls, gorgeous. So if you don't like spiders, you should look away because I'm going to show you an orb weaver. It's a garden orb weaver spider, I believe. They are beautiful. Look at the colors on them. He actually has some prey in his um, web right now. But that's just amazing. Okay, if you don't like spiders, you can come back now. This limelight over here is a little bit smaller than the ones in the back, and it's a little bit pinker because uh, I think it gets a little bit more sun over here, a little less protection um, because it also gets the heat from the bricks in the evening. But it's looking good anyways. And we're starting to get some screening, some real screening from this angle for the air conditioner. So that's fantastic. Well, yeah, we are at the end of this garden tour and the camera is trying to overheat. So we are going to say goodbye as we look at the beautiful bird bath over here and the gorgeous 
base habit of the elderberry above it. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and so does Chippy there on the bird bath. You see him? There he is, right there. All right, thanks again. See you next time.